Well, hey there, rock stars. This is Sarah Rockin' Robbins with sarahrobbins.com. Welcome to the webinar. Today, we are going to talk about social media for network marketing, how you can actively and effectively engage on your personal Facebook page. Now, make sure that you stay on until the end of the training because I have some fun treats as well as an invitation to our next Social Media Summit Part 2 where you can learn how to power prospect and rock your recruiting on other social media sites. I got a lot of requests from you on how to power prospect and engage your audience on YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, which is a hot new one that I'm excited to talk to you about, as well as you know Instagram, some apps that are out there as well. And so that's going to be social media part two. And if you hang on till the very end, I will teach you how you can get a free ticket to that social media event, as well as a replay of this training, because of course, you're going to want to make sure that your team watches it, because the more who go out and duplicate this, the greater success you're going to have as well. Now, before we get started, I would love to go ahead and get acquainted. Can you see me in that sea of sweet, smiling faces? I am a former kindergarten teacher by t trade, and while I love teaching kindergarten and first grade, unfortunately, because of Michigan's economy, I was facing the loss of my job. So I decided to pursue extra income, and my search led me to my network marketing company. I didn't find it when it was in network marketing. I first found it when it was a retail brand. I was working for them in the retail setting. It, along with my mom, Chris, and we happened to be in the right place at the right time when our founder said, you know what? We've been successful, but we've seen the power of the social economy. Our products aren't best kept trapped under glass. So they decided to leave retail and enter into direct sales and offered us the opportunity to join them. Now, when I started, I'm going to be the first to admit I was shy. I was young. I was broke. All of my friends were young and broke like me. I didn't have a network, but through personal and professional development and learning how to build my network. And one of the key ways that I did it was actually through social media. I was able to surpass my teaching income and part-time hours by the end of that school year. Then I decided to take my business full-time. And in five years, by the age of 29, I was recognized as being our company's first six-figure per month earner. And since then, we've mentored many to achieve six and seven-figure success within our business too. And that's the greatest joy for all of us. Now, you know, as I put together this training, of course, I'm used to m mentoring my team. And this is really one of my first trainings that I've done on my own generically, you know, to the entire networking profession. And I thought, gosh, I'm about to give away all of my juicy tips, right? Everything that I've been training my team. But here's what I believe. You get what you give. And a gift isn't a gift until you give it away. And if we can elevate our profession and we hear more amazing success stories and we start to do social media right, you guys, it's going to put us in a really positive light overall. And so that is what gets me excited. That is why we are doing this training today. So today... I'm going to be teaching you how to rock your network marketing business using Facebook. And again, in social media part two, I'm going to teach you how to use all of the other social sites. So stay until the very end, and you're going to hear a little bit more about this. But again, I mentioned to you, I was shy, I was young, I was broke, I had no network. How did I do it? Leveraging social media. So why is social media important? Now, here's the thing. If people tell you, oh, come on, don't use Facebook to promote your business, guys, this is the day and age where people are online, and if you want to attract the, the, attract the next generation of network marketing professionals, they live on their phones and they live online, period. And so you really can't deny it's not a fad. It's not going anywhere. We can take the timeless, tried and true principles of prospecting in, in network marketing, and we can also apply them to the online audience. What's the difference? If we do it the right way, we can do it. It's important. You know, think think about it this way. We're living in a social economy and it's a really great vehicle to get in touch and stay in touch. Who you know and what you have what they have to recommend is more influential now than ever before. It's the number one activity on the web. I heard something like if Facebook were a country, it would be one of the, you know, third largest countries in the world. 93% of marketers are using social media for Facebook. And in fact, last year, Facebook traffic surpassed Google traffic. So what does that mean? What that means is 
when people are searching out different products or companies, they're going to Facebook first to learn more about them. I've got a good story for you. I recently did this, okay? So I was going to an event and, um, you know, because I'm in skincare, I don't believe in going into the tanning booth. So I said, you know, I'm going to go and get one of those spray tans. But here's the thing. I know better. A good spray tan is better than a bad one, right? I mean, I am blonde hair, blue eyes, light skin. And the last thing I wanted to do was show up to this event looking oompa loompa orange. (laughs) And so I decided to do some research. And I was looking for some, you know, spray tanning places in the area. The first place I went to go spy on them was on their Facebook page. I typed in the name of their business and I was looking to see, okay, Is this legit? What what types of pictures do they have posted? What are they saying to their customers? And what are their customers saying about them? I made my decision completely based on what I found on their Facebook page. So it is critical that you have some presence on Facebook too. People will be looking for you. Now today specifically, I'm going to talk about how to use your personal page rather than a business page. We are going to talk about business pages and social media part two. And again, at the end of this training, I'll tell you how you can get access to that free class. But today we're going to talk about using your personal page. And you might be thinking, well, you know, I don't know if I want to be using my personal page to share this with people. I'm a little bit nervous. You know, what are my friends going to think? I'm going to teach you how to do it in a positive, professional, non-pushy way. It's not going to be buy my products, join my team. I promise you, this is going to be engaging. But here's why I think it's important. You know, yes, there are benefits of business pages. But with your personal page, consider this. You have a captive audience, your friends and family, who may or may not go over and like your business page, but are watching to see your daily engagement on your personal page. They want to know what's up with your life. So it's really important that you are leveraging that. That's free advertisement, you guys. Facebook business pages is all about paid ads. If you really want to get visibility, you're going to be paying some money, and that's okay. And again, we'll talk about that in session two, but if you really want to use it and use it effectively and do it for free, use your personal page. So why do I use Facebook? Well, it's powerful for three reasons. I call it the three E's. The first reason is this. Think about this. I, I, I pretty much, you know, to kind of capture what we're going to be talking about today, the way that I engage people in my business is by telling stories. You know, I tell stories of people who have joined me, tell people of stories of people who are achieving great success in our business, newbie knockouts that are having great success right out of the starting gates, as well as stories of of people, you know, before and afters or testimonials of people who are using our products successfully. And when I post this on my personal page and I tag them as well, so it shows up on their page, their friends see it too, so it gets even more visibility. What does that do? Well, what it does is it edifies that person. So it edifies the person that I'm recognizing or welcoming or giving a shout out to. It encourages my team because they're like, oh, wow, you know, creates that social proof. She's doing this. She's excited. I'm excited too. And the third E is it engages your audience. As they start to watch pictures of people who are having success in your business or with your product or service, they're eventually going to say, okay, I've been watching you. So what gives? You know, tell me a little bit more about this. You know, I teach my team to reach out to five new contacts a day. Five new contacts a day keeps leads coming your way. And I want you to think about that. You know, I have them, I teach them in my book, which I'll tell you about my book at the end of this. I teach them in my book, you know, how to go through and and create their contact list and how to add to their contact list. And I teach them about 10 different tips for power prospecting. And social media is only one of 10, you guys. This is a way, not the only way to prospect. But I teach them all of those things. But if they start to run out of contacts or you know, maybe they were like me. They didn't really have much of a network to begin with. Social media can be a really great way to build it, right? So as they're making those five contacts a day, you know, as they're posting and people are commenting or liking, it doesn't even matter if it's a post on their business. It's such a good excuse to inbox message them and say, hey, notice you liked my post today about, you know, my kid's field trip and I've been meaning to connect. I see that you're in Kansas and I have a business that's building there. I was wondering if I could pick your brain and tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing and, you know, get some ideas of, of building my business there and who you, who you might know might, it might be great for, you know, and take the conversation offline. It's super, super powerful. Okay. 
So when getting started on Facebook, I just want to give you a couple quick points of advice. First and foremost, if you're totally lost, even in how to creating your Facebook page, find the nearest Gen Yer, you know, somebody younger than you and just say, look, do you know anything about Facebook? Can you help me get started? I'll give you 20 bucks if you help me to get set up. Guys, a kid can help you get set up. Okay. And I'm not trying to, you know, be, be silly or, or be, be rude at all with that comment. I'm just saying, find somebody that can help you out. Make sure that you have a great professional profile picture. So I went to a photographer and said, hey, I've got a budget of 200 bucks. Can you take a picture of me and send me the digital file? You know, this is like Nike and their swoosh. That's their brand. It's their logo. It's their image. So I don't change my picture a lot because when there's all of that text and craziness floating around in your newsfeed, what captures your attention first? That person's picture. And if you like them and generally like what they post, when you see their stuff pop up in your newsfeed, you're going to stop and you're going to, you know, read it and comment it and like it. So um, make sure you've got a good picture of you that people can recognize and it looks great too. Make sure that... Um, you also have really gone in and you filled out your profile, the about section. Again, Facebook is giving you free advertising space. Why wouldn't you use it? I've gone to some leaders pages in my business and I am just like shocked to find out a few of them don't even have their company websites listed. So let's say that friend finds you from high school and they're wondering, okay, what's Sarah Robbins up to today? And they go to my about section they're going to learn more about my business. They might get curious and click on some links. So why wouldn't you have your business links and everything, you know, way for people to reach out and contact you as well? Next advice, clean up your pages. So, you know, if you want to really use this for business and you want to paint a professional image of why people should buy your products or join your team, you know, probably may not be best of pictures, you know, of college parties, you know, within your albums. Just make sure that you go through and you really look at what you're showcasing in your pictures and in your profile information as well. And then again, remember, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the value of business pages in, in part two, but in part one, I really want you to be focused on using your personal page because it is powerful if you do it in a positive and professional way, which is exactly what we're going to talk to you about today. So here's a picture of my profile at the time that I created this. And I want to just point out a couple things to you. You know, if you're lost and saying, you know, okay, where do I get started? Here's some tips. So the first big green arrow up top, you're going to see that this is the cover photo. Okay. It's a really big picture that they're able. It's, I want you guys to think of it this way. It's like a billboard. Okay. This is super, super cool because this is a picture that you can change often. And think about what we sell in network marketing. We sell a product or opportunity, or we sell product or service. But we also sell opportunity, right? Time and financial freedom. What are ways that you can paint that picture to people? You know, putting a picture there of your company convention, putting a picture there of your team, putting a picture there of, you know, your recent car celebration, putting a picture there of your recent launch event, putting a picture there of some fun and exciting things that are even happening with your family or in your life. That's the picture you can change up often, okay? Below that, you're going to see that other green arrow, my per, uh, my profile picture. So that's my headshot. Again, it's professional. I don't change it a lot because I want people to really get to recognize my face when they see me in the newsfeed. That red arrow below is that about section. So you can see that under my about section, I put it, I put um, a little bit more about my business and some links that they can learn more as well. Now, um, I want you guys to know upfront to be totally transparent. I had to go back and of course my pictures and my profiles and my posts that I'm sharing with you today, they talk about my company. I mean, I'm telling you that, you know, I, um, that I'm going to be talking to you about, you know, how to use business, this for business effectively and give you examples of posts. So what I did to keep this totally generic and, um, at the top, you know, integrity is of the utmost importance to me. I blanked out, you're going to see green bars throughout this presentation anywhere I could. I blanked out the name of my company. Um, just to keep this totally generic and to make you guys feel comfortable. But please know, I am a true fan of this profession and I'm a network marketing professional. And so, you know, my intent is to just simply give you the knowledge and we're all adults, you know, you know, to take it and to digest it how you will. And of course, um, my encouragement to you always is to choose a great company and stay with a great company and give it enough time to be successful. If you hear my trainings enough, you know, I talk about that snowball effect, right? Giving it three to five years and letting it build and stay focused and stay committed. And that's 
that's where you'll have true success. So I just wanted to let you know that up front. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to engage your audience, but it's more important first that you have an audience to engage, right? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to make new friends on Facebook and how to add friends on Facebook as well. Now, I recently just had a lot of fun pulling out old yearbooks and finding some old friends. And in the little search bar on Facebook up top, you can type in friends' names and you can find people that, you know, you used to go to school with or if you have any invitation lists, like your wedding invitations or address books. So you can search people out on your own. But it's really cool because Facebook has a way that they suggest friends for you and allow you to find people, which I'll talk to you in a moment. But also, it's important that you meet new friends. So again, I tell, you know, in, in my book, I talk a, a lot about different ways to prospect. And um, one of them being social media. But I tell my team, you know, when you're out and about and you're prospecting and you're talking to people, I was given the best advice. I'll give you a quick prospecting tip, okay? Free tip on prospecting before we get into social media. Um, that, you know, when you're out and about, I was given the best advice. You know, I was shy when I started my business. I mean, you guys, I was so paralyzed to talk to people. I literally used to do the verbal vomit all over. I mean, I saw stars. I cried. I called my mom. I quit about 8 million times. I mean, I really had quite quite the time in getting started. Used to be one of the least highest earners in the company. So one of my mentors gave me the best advice and said, Sarah, if you want to get good at networking, you have to learn to just ask a lot of questions. Almost like you're interviewing people because here's the thing. Questions are easy to ask, but they're also easy to answer. You know, the person talking, it's going to be no problem for them to converse back and forth as well. What's the number one thing people like to talk about themselves, right? So I would go out and give people great compliments. You know, if I got good service at a store, I'd say, thanks for your great service. Do you love what you do? Or, you know, oh, your kids are so cute. Do they go to school around here? And I just would start asking them a lot of questions and, you know, getting into conversation. And eventually I'd ask them this question. I called my professional pickup line. I'd say, so where do you live? And when they told me, I would say something like, you know, oh, earlier you mentioned that you live in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And you know what? I, I, I so love talking today. I'm actually building a business in Ann Arbor and was wondering if we could just stay in touch. I'd love to reach out and pick your brain a bit and get some ideas as I expand my business there. And so here's what I do. I always set the appointment to connect because personal calls are just so powerful. They're the best way to, you know, share information. But you guys know what happens, right? Not everybody picks up the phone. That should be no surprise, right? It happens to me too. So I always make the point, hey, you know, let's schedule to talk tomorrow at three o'clock and we exchange contact information. I give them mine, I get theirs. But I've taken it an extra step, which has helped me to generate amazing leads in my business. What I do is this. Before I leave them, I pull out my phone and I say, by the way, are you on Facebook? And I pull up my Facebook app and I say, okay, um, you know, help me to find you. And we type in their name and I add them as a friend. Then when I go home, I send them a message and I'll say, hey, Mary Sue, it's great meeting you today. Looking forward to our call tomorrow at three. And that's all. I don't say anything about my business and I call her. If Mary Sue never picks up her phone, which does happen, she now becomes a part of my Facebook audience because we're friends. And she'll start watching my posts and I kind of start dripping on her. And eventually she might come back around and say, all right, what gives? Tell me what you do. I've had people do this. Actually, I had a gal who met me at an event and we friended each other on Facebook. And she watched me on Facebook for a year and eventually said to me, okay, Sarah, I've been watching you. I'm interested. Tell me more. Now, here's a tip for you. I did not send her a bunch of links. What I did do was say, what's a good time and number to reach you? You see, social media is a conversation starter, and the fortune is always in the follow-up. So anytime somebody, you know, comments or engages or sends you, you know, a message or whatever, <clears throat> you always have to take the conversation offline and say, what's a good time and number to reach you? Because nothing replaces the excitement in your voice right? Nothing replaces that personal conversation. And she ended up recruiting herself. She joined me. And I've had people that I met and I remembered meeting. And again, they never picked up their phone and they'll say, I don't remember how we met. And I'm like, I do. You didn't pick up the phone. But again, they watched me over time and they joined. So that's a million dollar tip for you. Now, again, I told you how I was going to show you how Facebook allows you to find new friends too, or gives you some suggestions. So when you go to your friends tab, 
it'll give you a little spot and I'm forgetting what it's called now, but, um, you know, to find more friends, I believe, you know, when you go to your current friends and you look, Facebook will, you know, have a page where it suggests some friends to. And this is what it looks like at the time that I'm recording this. It says, you know, find uh, friends from different parts of your life. Now, this is why it is so important that you, you fill out your about section. If you do not fill out your about section, it will not give you these suggestions. So do that first, your about section, your profile. And then go to find friends because it's going to make suggestions based on your hometown, the city you live in, what high school you went to. As you can see, I went to three high schools. My family moved. Um, you can find friends of other friends. You can find friends you went to college with, people you work with or did work with. And it even just makes some suggestions too. Now, sometimes Facebook suggestions of friends are right on and you do know them and you can add them as a friend if you don't. I want to give you this disclaimer because I don't want you to be mad at me. Don't go on a random friending frenzy. So I'm not going to go and click add friend, add friend, add friend, add friend, add friend to every person because here's the thing. Facebook has started to ask now, do you know this person? And if they click no and you get too many people saying no, they're going to say, "Uh uh-oh, she's out spamming a bunch of people. And you kind of go to Facebook jail for a while. Your account can get suspended or frozen or even shut down. So if you're going to friend somebody you don't know, you better send them a little message first. You know, you can go to their profile and you'll see the little message button. Just say, hey, Facebook suggested we had friends or hey, Sharon, you know, we've got 21 mutual friends on Facebook. Not sure if we know each other, but I'd like to get to know you. Would you be interested in connecting as friends? And then send them a friend request, okay? But it's a great idea to start to build your audience. The more people you have seeing what you do, then the more interest you're going to get as well. So this is a really important step. All right. So I know you guys are ready and you're thinking, okay, so tell me, how do I make this work? What do I do? First and foremost, I want to share with you a little mantra that I share with my team. A post a day keeps leads coming your way. A post a day keeps the cobwebs away, right? If you're only posting once a week, oh my gosh, nobody's going to start to follow you. So if you're going to use this as a method of prospecting, one of the 10 that I teach, You've got to be consistent with it. You have to do it every single day. So, you know, you schedule your time. If you're going to do it in the morning before you leave for work or if you're going to do it at night before your head hits the pillow, you know, it takes five minutes. But the results, you know, obviously can reward you heavily. So make sure that you're really taking the time to put into it. Now, if you're really committed, you can post several times a day. So you might post, you know, think about it. You guys know how many of you, if I, if I could say, raise your hands, you could raise your hands and uh, tell me. But if I said, how many of you, when you wake up, you roll over in bed, you pick up your phone and you check your email and you go on Facebook. Okay. So you might post first thing. Uh, How many of you are checking Facebook over lunch? You know, if you go to work, might post during that time. How many of you are checking Facebook, you know, right before you pick up this kids from school or right after? And how many of you are checking it in the evening and before bed, right? Okay, so I want you to think about that, that if you can post a couple times a day, that's even more powerful. But at least commit to posting once a day to keep these leads coming your way. I'm going to give you ideas of what to post. And at the very end, I have a special surprise for you. So stay tuned. All right, so remember, when you're posting this, I'm going to give you ideas of posts. But when you're posting... I want you to be buzzworthy. Excuse the typo there. I just realized that. (laughs) Be buzzworthy. Be a giver of great value, okay? So here's the thing, you guys. People don't care if you ate a hot dog for lunch. You really have to put some thought into your post. And how you might do that is balance your posts. You can't post about your business every day. If you're posting about your business every day, people are going to think, man, she's like a walking advertisement. I'm getting so annoyed. And they're going to unfriend you as quick as they friended you. And I'm going to teach you how to do your posting. If you're going to use it as a social media to prospect, I'll teach you how to do it in a way that engages and doesn't turn people off. But, you know, you're going to sprinkle in your business just a couple times a week. That's all. Uh, Your other posts each day can be inspirational. I highly recommend that. Like I've got a good John Maxwell leadership quote book. And when in doubt, I just pull some quotes out of there and I type them out and I post them. And you know what's so cool? People say to me, oh my gosh, I love following you because you're so inspiring. That's not just people on my team. That's my family. That's my friends. That's my neighbors. They say, oh, I always love what you post on Facebook. People want to, you know, follow somebody that's inspiring. Um, You might post things that are funny because people like humor as well. And, uh, you know, post some things personally too. If you're uh, going to the cider mill with the kids or if you're on a family trip 
or, you know, just fun and exciting things that are happening in your life or in your family's life as well. You know, think about it this way. Why, you know, the reason why I think reality shows have become so popular, people love like kind of getting an inside look of what's happening in and people's life. And that's why I believe we've become so di- addicted to these social sites too. You know, it's really powerful. So be, you know, just kind of narrating things that are happening in your life and I'll teach you how to do, you know, all of that. And then of course your professional posts as well. Now, here's the key. This is your million dollar learning. If you get nothing else from this training class, I mean, turn off the TV, put your cell phone down, stop what you're doing and tune in to this part. It's really important that your posts are seen. Now, I do believe that if you're posting powerful things, which I'll teach you how to do, if you're posting powerful things, then people are going to want to go directly to your page, right? They're going to type in your name, Sarah Fairless Robbins, and they're going to say, I want to see what Sarah posted today. But until you build that type of attraction, the only place people will see your posts is in their newsfeed. Okay, so hang with me for a minute because I have to talk to beginning, intermediate, and advanced Facebook users here. Now, disclaimer, this is not, I'm not a social media expert. I don't claim to be. I'm just giving you tips on what has worked best for me and my business and what I do know, okay? I'm sure you can learn a lot more about this in Google if you want to get more in depth. But there's a difference between your newsfeed and your Facebook page. So if people go to your Facebook profile, that means they type in your name and they just go to look and see what you're doing. But what are the chances that they're going to go and look at your page every day? Slim, right? Where most people are going to see what you're up to is in their newsfeed. So that's when you log right into Facebook. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, log out of your Facebook, log back in. And this is where you're going to see your newsfeed. This is where all of your friends' posts are showing up. And it looks like a bunch of texts and a bunch of pictures and things like that. Well, Facebook's not showing you. They'll show top news. Facebook's not showing you everything that everyone has posted. So you're not seeing the hundreds of people or the thousands of people you're friends with at any given moment posting. Facebook kind of has a popularity contest. It's something called Edge Rank. And if you want to learn more about it because you are more advanced, I would just Google that search term and you can learn a little bit more about it. But basically, Facebook kind of has virtual currency or points that it gives you based on how people are interacting with your posts. And based on that, if you get good Edge Rank or Facebook says this post is really popular based on what I'll share with you. And then they're going to say, you know what? Sarah's post deserves to be seen in the top of the news feed. And so when people log in, they're going to see my posts. And obviously, the more people who see my posts, the more people that I can engage in learning more about my products, my service, or my business. So your goal in all of this, as you're using social media, is to make sure that you get good at drink and that you make it to the top news feed. So how? I'm going to give you the tips right now. If you don't want to go and search and you don't want to get overwhelmed and you just want to know a simple way and how to do it, guys, I'm a kindergarten teacher. And if you know my training style, you know that I make it super simple and duplicable. Write this down. Again, you're going to be consistent. If you're using this as a method of prospecting, you have to post at least once a day. The next thing is, is take note of the time of day. You're going to notice a lot of studies out there telling you the exact times to post on Twitter, the exact times to post on Facebook. Well, here's what I have to say about that. Personally, I'm not going to be a slave to social media. My butt is not going to be glued to my seat at certain times of day. That's the beauty of our business is the time freedom, right? I mean, I don't want to be running to my social media sites and timing things out. I mean, I love living a life of freedom where I control my schedule and my schedule doesn't control me. That's what this is all about. But you know what? I will be aware that, you know what? I probably don't want to post something at 3 a.m. because most of my friends are sleeping, so they're not going to see it and then a lot of people won't engage on it. So I might say, okay, you know what? I know that everybody checks their Facebook first thing in the morning, so I'll post something early in the morning. And you know what? I know a lot of people check it around lunch, especially if they work, so I'll post something around lunch. And, you know, mid-afternoon, typically good to around, you know, before kids get home from school or, you know, right around that time. And you know what? In the evening, too, before people go to bed, they might just check, you know, their stuff. They might check Facebook real quick before they hit the uh, hit the pillow. So, you know, if you're going to post a couple times a day, then, you know, it's a general rule of thumb. If you're only going to post once a day, then, again, time that out when you think most people will see your posts. You know your audience. You know what time they're typically online. Now, 
if you want people to start to really engage in what you're doing and start to look for your posts, again, keep it positive. Nobody likes to follow negative Nellies. And if you're super controversial, you could lose people as well. Now, I do believe you should be you, okay? But make sure that you stay, stay away from really negative topics. Save it for a different platform. Be inspiring and be funny. Okay, people love inspiration and they love humor. We get enough negativity out and about in our every single day. Now, the next thing is to be sure that your post is seen if it makes it to the news feed, right? Is you want to have a picture with every post. Why? Well, I want you to think about this. If you log in and you take a look at your news feed, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see, oh my gosh, it's a bunch of words. How overwhelming, right? You notice the post with pictures first. At least I do. If somebody said, I'm going to the cider mill and they just wrote it out, I'm not going to stop and read their stuff. But if they have a great big picture of a juicy red apple or, you know, their family at the cider mill or whatever, I'm going to stop and say, oh, I wonder what this post is about. And I'll take time to read it. So you should always post a picture with every single post. I always do. Now, how do I get those popularity points? How do I increase my edge rank to make sure that my post makes the top news feed? Well, Facebook basically gives you that virtual currency or those points based on how many people like, comment, or share it. So how many likes is it getting? You know, you see it right below your post. You'll see where it says like, comment, and share. How many people are liking it? How many people are commenting on what you posted? And how many people are sharing it? So for example, let me just give you an example of how I could increase likes, comments, and shares. Then I'll give you some examples of power posts after this. It's one thing for me to say, oh, it was a sunny day here in Michigan. A few people might like it, but probably not a lot. If I said it's this beautiful sunny day here in Michigan and I posted a picture of our beautiful lake outside, more people would probably like that post, right? Because they want to stop and say, oh, that looks like a pretty picture. And they're going to like it. So Google Images is your friend. If you can, take a picture of the thing you're talking about. If you can't, you know, when you search something out on Google, if you click on images, you'll find some images. So you could post, you know, Lake, you know, Michigan Lake, and you'll find some images that you can download and and, um, upload with your post, okay? Um, If I said something like, it's a sunny day here in Michigan with a picture, and at the end I said, what is the weather like where you're at? Now a bunch of people are going to start commenting on that post. And guess what? Facebook's going to say, this is popular. Everybody's liking it. Everybody's commenting on it. Some people are sharing it because of the pretty picture. I'm going to give her all these popularity points and you know what? She's going to show up in the top news feed. And what does that mean? What that means is, is most of my friends are going to see my posts when they log in. And so now more people are going to see what I'm doing and what I'm up to. And the more that they start to see me and like what I'm doing, the more they're going to start to follow me and want to go to my own page every single day. So again, a drink is important. So be thinking about ways you can engage people on your post. Like, tell me what you think of this. Or, you know, tell me one word to describe your weekend. You know, maybe you tell them a little bit about your weekend in a picture. Tell me one word to describe your weekend. You want something simple that will get people engaging right away. Or click like if you agree. Or share this picture if it inspires you. Tell me more about this. What do you think this person was trying to say? Or what do you think they meant? So if you start each post with some sort of bold statement that kind of catches their attention and talk a little bit and add a picture, end with a question or something that would solicit some sort of engagement, a comment or a response to what you posted. So what that means is, is you're going to really have to take some time and think about what you post before you post, okay? So give it a little bit of thought. Now, what I love about Facebook is this. This is why you don't have to be posting about your business or product every day. And don't, because that is unprofessional. It's annoying, right? You don't want to be following somebody who's using their page just to sell, 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 sell. Okay? And I'm going to teach you how to do these posts without selling a thing. Okay? But what I love about Facebook is, is when somebody likes or comments on what you do, it doesn't even matter if it's about your business. Let's say that I posted about my lake. And a bunch of people liked and a bunch of people commented, oh, it's 70 and sunny here in Southern California. Oh, it's hot and humid here in Mississippi. And they all start commenting. I could go to Betty Sue who said it's 70 and sunny in Southern California. And I can like her comment, right? Because I always want to engage on what everybody's doing on my page. 
And I can direct message her. I can inbox message her. I can go to her page and message her and say, hey, Betty Sue, you know, I saw that you commented on my Facebook post today and I've been meaning to catch up. I see that you're in Southern California and I've got a business that's building there. And I was wondering if we could talk live sometime today, I would love to pick your brain and get contact information and take the conversation offline. It's a really great way to power prospect. And again, you can't sit behind your computer to build a business. It's a great way to start the conversation, but then you have to take the conversation offline. And I talk about how to do that in my book, which I'll talk to you about in just a little bit. Now remember, before I give you ideas of these posts, I have to give you the disclaimer. Every company is unique. So just because I share an idea with you doesn't mean you're allowed to do it in your company. And just because at the time I record this, it doesn't mean that this is timeless information that we'll always be able to do or whatever. You've got to be super careful of product claims and income claims because of different regulatory bodies that monitor us but also really careful to honor and respect your company's policy and procedure too. So read them, understand them, and respect what your company is asking you to do. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about some ideas of power posts for your business. And again, these are ideas. And I went back, you guys, I went back like, I mean, years of my posts. So much preparation went into this webinar. I mean, years of my posts to see some ideas of what I had posted that had gotten some good uh, engagement and drink and, you know, some good interaction and really helped me to power prospect and rockstar recruit. I mean, I've recruited well over um, 200 people at the time that I share this. And a lot of, you know, my business is done online. So, um, you know, as I share this with you, these were sprinkled in with my personal posts, my inspirational posts, my funny posts, my personal posts about my family, et cetera. I want you to keep that in mind. This is not like a series of posts I did every day. And um, I'm also going to tell you too, because some of these posts are older, if I notice any ways I could have improved the posts, then I'll share with you how I could have done that too. Now, again, you're going to see the green bar covering up my company name, just in complete integrity of, you know, just, just to be completely honest with, you know, people that are on in other companies. I don't want that to be a distraction for you, but again, you're adults. So I trust that you're not going to be offended by any of these posts and that you're smart enough to know your company rocks. You're going to stick with it, stay with it and be super successful with it. And um, these are just some ideas for you, okay? So the first thing that you can do is welcome new people to your team. Now, first and foremost, I learned something great from one of my rock stars, Nikki Lazo. And I love Nikki's story. She started last year, the beginning of the year, with like $10,000 in her sales volume. And now today has well over $100,000 in volume. She just qualified for her company car. She promoted to the top level in our pay plan. It's an amazing story. But her story, I mean, it took her two and a half years to even start to experience even um, any notable success. You know, she was the first to admit she wasn't a fast starter. You know, you hear some people, you know, in our company, six figures in six months, and they did that, this, that, and the other. And you start to compare and compete and struggle and strive. She stuck with it. She didn't give up. And she talks about how there was a major shift that happened when she really started to leverage social media. And it really created this sorority hood or this sisterhood on their team and an unstoppable culture that her online audience wanted to be a part of, but that her team wanted to stay a part of, right? I mean, culture is the glue that holds it together. When the business isn't working for you, you know, you want to make sure that you've created the type of environment that people are going to want to stick and stay and continue to play no matter, you know, what their initial success is. So one of the ways that they started to do this was to create, uh, do welcoming posts on their personal page. Now, we do have internal group pages. Like I have team pages where you can create Facebook groups and I recommend them. And we do welcome our new consultants there. We, um, share their promotions and and give them shout outs, newbie knockouts, you know, superstar sellers, rockstar recruiters, people who are earning great things. And that creates team spirit. And that's important. So don't neglect that. But I tell them, after you post there, you need to post on your personal page as well. Okay. The reason why you want to post on your personal page is this, you know, when you welcome your newbies is it is going to, for the reason I said, the three E's, that it's going to edify that person. So I'm going to tag them. So it shows up on their page too. So my audience is going to see it. So is theirs. If you don't know how to tag people, ask someone to teach you how. It is going to encourage your team because your team's going to say, oh man, all these new people are joining. This is exciting. It creates that social proof. 
but it's also going to engage your online audience when they see people are joining your business. And those that are commenting on the post are excited about the business, right? So they're going to want to start to ask you more. So what Nikki and her team started to do is this. And I ask if you're on my team and watching this to keep me out of tags on post welcoming your newbies because there's too many of you. I've got tens of thousands of people on my team and um, it would just clog my page up. But find a small group of people, you know, or if you have a smaller manageable team, just say, you know what, let's tag each other in our in our posts when we're welcoming our newbies. You know, tag the newbie and tag some of your team members too. And you're going to have to train your team. This will alert you when I tag you to comment on the post. Say welcome. Say, you know, why you love the business. Give them some encouragement. Because the more people tell your team, you know, when you're tagged, like it and comment on it, that's going to create that engagement on the post, which is going to get it up in the newsfeed. It's going to boost team spirit, but it's also going to allow your online audience, your Facebook friends to start to say, man, I want to be a part of this too. They are always having so much fun. And uh, she said that when she started to do this, I mean, literally their volume started to go through the roof. And she said that social media has been one of the top ways that they've really been building and experiencing this incredible success. She calls it a tagging frenzy, which I love. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of this type of post. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you how I could have made this post more powerful. Posted a picture of my newbies because, again, you know, people see that picture. They're going to relate to it. They're going to connect with it. It's going to catch their eye. And um, that would have helped my prospects too. But, you know, I said, basically, the way I asked for engagement on this post is I said, join me in welcoming my new business partner. So that alerted my team. Please say something to them. Say welcome. You can see down below, Krista said, welcome, everybody. Um, And I told more about their names and where they were from. So this way, if anybody else was from Florida or Missouri, they might say, oh, I've got a business there too. What I could have done even better as well is talked a little bit about that person, you know, their background, who they are, and why they were excited to join. And, you know, add a little link to their website. So if their prospect sees it, wants to learn more, they'll go right to their site. So that's what I could have done a little bit better. Um, But you can see a bunch of people liked it, a few people shared it, and then, you know, all those comments that came from, you know, people welcoming them to the team. Again, that makes them feel super good. But then my team is like, okay, she's recruiting, she's building, this business is working, and it excites them. And then my online audience starts to say, hmm, I'm a teacher too, or huh, I live in Florida too, or you know what, I've been watching her for a while, and this seems pretty darn exciting. Other people are joining. This must be that it's pretty, it must mean that it's pretty legit, right? Um, another way that you can uh, post, this is another example of a power post, is post opportunity calls. It piques curiosity. You know, I do a weekly call for my team Sunday nights or 15 minutes and everybody posts them and I encourage them to post them and say, you know, if you like what you learn, message me after the call. And I always say at the end of the call, get back to the person who invited you on the call tonight. Get all the information that you need. And so I always redirect them back. So if your company does opportunity calls, post them on your page. I do like a little picture of it and I say, curious about what I do call in, no pressure, just listen. And I give them the number and I give them the time. So if you go on my page on a Sunday or scroll back, you know, Sarah Fairless Robbins on a Sunday, you'll always see that I post this little reminder and people do, they listen in out of curiosity. Sometimes they message you and sometimes they don't. But again, they start to see it after a while. They're going to start to get curious. They're going to want to listen, learn, and hear more. Next idea of a power post, promote events. You can say something like, who do you know in Northern California? I just did an event in Northern California. So that was my big, bold opening statement. Who do you know in Northern California? I'm building a business there. Create some exclusivity. You know, I've got a limited number of tickets. Would love for you to be my guest. And if you come, it's okay to bribe them. I'll give you some free product or I'll treat you to a drink afterwards. Guys, free product can just be some samples and invite them to be your guests. So here was an example. I posted the flyer. Again, I leverage exclusive exclusivity. I have a handful of VIP invitations, told a little bit about some exciting things. And I said, you know, message me to get on my list. If you come, I'll bring some award-winning products for you and a free drink on me. Share business success stories. So how do you tell about your business without being like, you know, sharing all the features, you know, this business is great because X, Y, and Z, join my team. That's annoying, right? That's a pitch. How do you do it? Well, you share stories of people that are having success. That's going to make people want to learn more about your business. Now, if you're new and just getting started and you don't have a team, 
then share some of the leader success stories that you see your leader sharing and just say congratulations to my colleagues. There's nothing wrong with that. You're going to edify them. That's going to encourage your team and that's just going to engage your audience. I think that's a nice thing to do. You'll see where, you know, I, I posted this and 20 people shared it. I guarantee you those were my team members sharing it to, you know, post it on their page. Congrats to my colleagues. Okay. So here I posted the new car achievers on our team. And I said, congratulations to each of you. This is a rolling reminder of what's possible when we work together and passionately pursue our dreams. It was a nice post, got 245 likes, 29 comments and 20 shares. The way I could have gotten more comments and engagement is say, join me in congratulating them to get people, you know, to give them an idea. Please comment on this post, right? Without saying, please comment on this post, join me in congratulating them. Did that with Nikki's story. People love to hear those failing forward stories. And I told Nikki's story, you know, people struggle that leads to a victory about how long it took her, two and a half years. But she stayed coachable, committed. She believed in her team and the power of her dream. And over literally a couple of months, they quadrupled their volume. She's car qualified and promoted to the top of her pay plan. And her team is doing that as well. I mean, you guys see how many people got inspired? 460 people liked that. 19 shared it. And there was hundreds of comments as well. Powerful. Um, you can also do that too as people are earning trips, incentives, et cetera. Again, they don't even have to be on your team. I just said, for in this case, it was. Join me in congratulating my team who achieved the, basically the top title in our in our program. And I shouted them out. So I tagged them in the post. So it shows up on their page as well, which increases visibility for them and the engagement on the post. And I said, the best part is you all can join us. Who's, who's next? Who's coming? So then, of course, my team's going to comment, right? They're going to shout out. It encourages them. But also, it increases the edge rank. But how did I engage the rest who weren't on my team? This was really clever. I said, if you've been to Paris, tell me. Places to go, people to see. And a bunch of people gave me some tips and pointers on traveling to Paris. All right. Another idea. So you're thinking, okay, that's business. How do I share the products without being like, join my product because it, if you eat this magical berry, you're going to fly off of mountaintops. Okay. I know I'm being totally sarcastic, but you know, without spamming, without being solicity, without being salesy, how do you do it? Share before and after pictures, share testimonials, you know, make sure you tell your newbies when they start to take a before picture to take a picture 30 days in, 60 days in, whatever your company coaches, if it's an actual product where you can see results. Get testimonials from your customers, whether it's a service-based company or product-based company. You know, say, hey, you know, I'm doing a giveaway this week. Anybody who submits a testimonial is entered to win a free whatever. And then when you post the before and afters, you know, our company has approved before and after pictures we can post and you can post yours as well. Or when you post those testimonials, Always post it with a picture. You know, if you have the before and after picture, post that. If you don't, post a picture of the person giving the testimonial and tag them. Why? Don't you want their friends to see it too and inquire and say, hey, I'm interested more. And they can say, oh, let me introduce you to my friend, Sarah, right? So I always think that that's really powerful. So here was an example. I want to take this, I want to go through the slide as fast as I can because it's a freaky picture. Uh, no, when I posted my before and after pictures, you guys, it was just insane. I was a kindergarten teacher and my kindergartners used to go, Miss Robbins, you have polka dots on your face. I mean, I had really bad adult cystic acne and thank goodness today I'm polka dot free. And I said, you know, thanks to my products. And I put that out there. I got tons of new customers on that very day. So I know it can be scary, but, you know, take the leap of faith. It will help you more than it hurts you. I promise. Another way that you can get your products out to people is doing like freebie Friday giveaways. So again, this applies if you have a product-based business. But, um, you know, maybe saying something like, hey, I've got 10 samples that, you know, I'm ready to give away. Comment below if you want one. The first 10 to comment will get a freebie, you know, and basically, you know, you can give away whatever amount um, that you want and then message them for their, uh, their address. But what I would do is this. The fortune is in the follow-up. A sample without a name is money down the drain. So when you message them, say, I promise you're going to love the product and tell them more about it and how to use it and what it does. And say, if you promise me you're going to use it, I promise you I'll follow up and schedule the appointment to follow up. And when you call them, it's an excellent opportunity to say, how did you love the product? And before I get you started in it, you know, for me, I'll say, I'll give you free skincare as a consultation. Before I give, get you started in it, I want to tell you more about my business and why I'm so excited about it. 
what a good excuse to pick up the phone and prospect them. Uh, one of our top leaders actually uh, in our company is building one of the fastest growing teams. Cindy was prospected this way through somebody giving her a sample pack and following up. Fantastic. So you can see, you can do that in person. You can do it online. Elizabeth did this online and she said, my own Sephora style sample program starts today. And she said, you know, I'm in a challenge to make these, you know, samples, find their way to bathroom sinks around the country by Friday. And she did a survey monkey for them to enter in their address. You know, think about it this way. If you say, and this is maybe how I would have changed her, her post, I might say, comment below if you want one and I'll message you for your address that's going to get more engagement on the post than them going to an outside link. And then she, you know, told them places that they were featured in the press. So awesome idea, Elizabeth. Love it. All right. Referrals can be very rewarding. I actually, uh, these two lovely ladies that are on my screen right now were both kind of referral sources. Uh, Stephanie Getz was, uh, I taught her son in kindergarten. And when I left kindergarten, naturally, she was like, where are you going? I want my younger kids to have you as a teacher. And I told her about what I was doing. She started referring a lot of people on. And I said, you know, I'll reward you for your referrals, some free product or, you know, cash bonus is a finder's fee. And she continued to do it. And eventually she was like, wait a minute, why don't I do this? And she joined. Ended up promoting to the top of our pay plan, earning over $10,000 in bonuses. And the best part is she's become one of my best friends. Now, the other person next to her is Emily Pinataglu. Emily is a top leader in our company. And here's how I found Emily. It was through social media asking um, for some referrals. I went to my sister, Emily, first, and I told her about the business. She's not interested. And I said to her, which to me, I always say is crazy because both, both my mom and I earn six figures a month in our company, but she's not interested. She's got her own journey in life. So I said, Emily, Will you at least help me to get the word out? You know, that's the best way you can help. Because here's the thing, guys. People like to help. Sometimes they feel like, you know, a little bit overwhelmed because they may not be interested in the business or the products. They don't want to tell you no. If you actually ask them for referrals, they're going to feel better that they can contribute in some way without having to join you in the business or product. So I said, you know, I'll give you a portion of my cash bonus as a finder's fee or free product as a thank you, which I fulfill through my auto ship, if you'll get the word out for me. And I gave her some things, some video links, you know, my website couple lines of text to post in Facebook. And that day it found Emily Pinata Glue said, I'm interested in learning more. Again, I took the conversation offline. She came to a presentation we were doing. She joined. She promoted to the top of our plan, earned over $10,000 in bonuses and served on our company's leadership advisory board. And today is one of my best friends. And it truly was the best $50 that I ever spent, the gift that kept on giving. So friends and family, my goodness, why wouldn't you ask your husband to post something for you or one of your best friends or your parents or whomever? You know, my husband posted my success story video that I have on youtube.com uh, forward slash skincare consultants. You can see I did a little video based on my company's policies, made sure it was approved and all of those great things. And um, he posted it there and again, got a bunch of engagement and he had his friends say I'm interested and I got some really awesome leads that way. Now, how do you do shameless self-promotion? Okay, so you earn something and you want to tell people without seeming braggadocious. Well, here's how I uh, promoted my uh, trip that I won with my company to Italy. Now, how could I have made the post be better? Obviously, a picture. I should have put a huge, beautiful picture of Italy, but I didn't. Well, silly. It would have gotten more engagement than I did. But I said, who has been to Italy? There's my big opening statement that's going to catch their attention. I want a fabulous trip to Florence with my company and I name my company name. I want to add some days on to the trip. Where do you recommend I go and why? So I ended with question to solicit engagement, which got a bunch of comments from people that weren't even in my business who had been to Italy before. And again, hint, hint, I'm showing them I'm getting free trips with my business. So people say to me all the time, how are you getting all this stuff? What is, what is, what is, what exactly do you do? And it's really cool. It opens the door for great conversations. Most people that I find on social media come to me. You know, if you've got a company car program, you're in qualification or you want to be, it's your goal, go and get quote unquote fitted for your brand new car and post about it online. And you know, if you're going to the dealership, hey, which model do you recommend and why? Right? I mean, those are some really exciting things. Um, so this was my trip to Paris. Again, ideas of places to go, people to see. And I posted a picture of this trip book that I had just gotten in the mail again. I should have posted a picture of the Eiffel Tower. What was I thinking? But a bunch of people, some of my neighbors, I mean, a bunch of people were posting a little bit more about their experience in Paris. Show your experiences. Again, we paint a picture of lifestyle, time and financial freedom. So how do you show that with albums? I do Facebook picture albums all the time on company trips. 
at our conventions. I show us having fun together as a team. If you go to my personal page, Sarah Fairless Robbins, go under pictures and then go under albums and see how I cleverly name my albums, title my albums, do website links to my albums and the types of pictures that I put in those albums. You need to be doing that too. So steal my ideas and, and learn more about what I do and apply it to your company. Okay. When in doubt, inspire. Look at what happens when I just speak from my heart and I post some cool pictures to go with it. 250 likes, 126 shares, 19 comments. 335 likes, 16 uh, comments, 192 shares. This was just me speaking from the heart with like a quote picture I found. 188 likes, 25 comments, 109 shares. Notice at the end I said, can I get an amen? Soliciting engagement, right? Everyone was saying amen, 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 amen. Super smart. A drink. Okay. And when in doubt, make them laugh. Okay. So put funny things. Again, I should have posted a picture here, but I said, OMG, my husband joined Pinterest. He's trying to figure it out. And we were laying in bed. This was really funny, you guys. All of a sudden I hear, uh oh, my finger slipped. I accidentally pinned an updo, which is like a woman's hairstyle. <laughs> He's got a funny Pinterest page, by the way. You've got to check it out. I did not help him with it. And you will know it when you see it, but it's super cute. Um, on the next one, these SoMe cards, these are great. So you can go to their website and um, they in no way endorse this and I am, no, am in no way endorsing them, but I just love some of the stuff they put. But it says, you know, I, I'd like a Diet Pepsi, a Diet Coke. And then the waiter, waitress says, Diet Pepsi okay? And she says, is Monopoly money okay? I mean, I thought that was hilarious. And so did 212 other people and the 25 people commenting and the 64 people who shared it. I mean, this post went viral. Okay. Remember, a post today keeps leads coming your way, but only a few should be about your business. And the fortune is in the follow up. Prospecting is a way, it's not the only way. It's one of 10 top ways that I really teach to my team. And when somebody likes, comments, or shares, or says, hey, I'd like to hear more, go offline, right? Send them a message. Hey, notice that you commented on my post today, been meaning to connect with you in relation to my business. It's expanding in your area. Can we connect today? Or hey, I saw that you commented on my post today. I mean, if people are messaging you guys, don't send them links. What's a good time and number to reach you? Let's talk live, okay? Make sure that you're incorporating all of these social media sites into your email signatures, into your voicemail, into your business cards, into other social media profiles. If you're on, you know, another social media site, put a link to your Facebook page there and vice versa, okay? The more places you have this, the better. So when in doubt, now stay on because I'm going to give you some good ideas and tips for the other social sites, how you can get them at the end. But when in doubt, I want you to follow me and do what I do. You have my full permission. If you like what I post, please at least give me the courtesy of giving me a like or commenting or whatever. You know, first, don't just go and swipe people's posts. But I do believe that copying is the best form of flattery. If you're in my company and you like it, give me a like or a comment first and then go ahead and copy and paste and post and do as I do. Obviously, if I'm posting about my family, you don't want to copy and paste, but just say, oh, she posts about our family today. Maybe I should do something like that too, okay? And just kind of use it as a good outline for the types of things that I'm posting. If you're not in my company, say, okay, how could I repurpose this post for my company? So you can follow me. My Facebook friends list is full. It maxes out at 5,000, but it allows you to follow, which is just as good as being friends because you can stay subscribed to me at facebook.com forward slash fearless.robbins. You can see the link up at the top of the page um, or just in the search bar type in Sarah Fearless. Robbins. Okay. You can also see what I'm doing too. You can get more tips on Facebook for business and building your network marketing business. This is a totally generic page. I recommend that you uh, share this page with your team or suggest the page to your team or copy and paste the link to your team. Because just like this, I never talk about my business there. You will never see me post about my business, my products, nothing there. It is not a page for me to recruit. Again, as a leader in this profession, integrity is of the utmost importance. But what you will see is free blog posts, free training, free ideas, free inspiration um, that's working for people all across the profession. 55,000 people at the time I've, I'm recording this are liking this and thousands of people are talking about this every single day. Go to facebook.com forward slash Sarah Robbins fan page. So facebook.com forward slash Sarah Robbins fan page. Or in the search bar, type in Sarah Robbins, Sarah with an H, Robbins with two Bs, comma, Rockin' Robbins Networking Team. And you have to like the page. You see where it says liked? You have to click like. Otherwise, you will not get my um, posts every single day. So you have to click like 
that's going to be very, very important. Now, I've got more great training on my website as well, sarahrobbins.com, S-A-R-A-H-R-O-B-B-I-N-S.com. That's where you'll find all of my blogs and uh, programs and trainings and things like that as well. Now, I'm going to be doing a, a training coming up on the other social media sites because a lot of you have asked, you know, how do I power prospect on Twitter? How do I power prospect on Pinterest? And by the way, I did a little quick five-minute training video on that on my YouTube site, which you can find on youtube.com forward slash skincare consultants. I have a little um, page just for network marketing and social media training. Um, And, you know, how do I uh, power prospect on YouTube? How do I power prospect on Google Plus? You guys, Google Plus is hot. If you want to know what's happening in SEO and how to get your stuff seen, it Google Plus is what it is about. I just have recently heard about it. I cannot wait to train you on this on part two. Um, how do I get leads on LinkedIn? How do I get leads, you know, with Instagram and all of the apps? First and foremost, start to follow me on those sites. And again, watch and see what I do. Okay. Now on my personal stuff, I do post things about my business. Again, we're professionals. Uh, you obviously, you can use it and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to repurpose this for my company and whatever. So don't feel at all threatened by anything like that. My generic page, my business page, you know, I shared with you, there's going to be nothing posted about my business. So you can share that with your team. But if you follow me in these places, these are just going to give you ideas of, you know, what to do for your business too. So all of the links are there. So when you look at the replay of all of this, you can write down these links and follow me there, but just search me out. Um, Actually, if you go to sarahrobbins.com on the homepage, there's a link, a little button to all of my social media sites are there. So you can just click them and it'll take you to each page. That's probably the easiest way. But I want to do a training with you called Social Media Part 2. I want to teach you everything that I know that's helping me to power prospect and actively engage my online audience on all of the social sites, plus a few of my favorite apps. And this is going to be a program that is going to hold a lot of great content, a lot of great value. If you like what you learned today, this is going to absolutely rock your world. So how do you get it? I'll tell you in just a moment. But before I do, I want to remind you social media is a way, not the only way to power prospect. It's one of about 10 different ways that I train. And once people message you, you have to take the conversation offline. So you do have to become a network marketing professional. You do have to know how to take that power prospect into a rock star recruit. You have to know how to effectively engage them. You have to know how to help to get them off to a powerful start. You have to know how to teach them dynamic duplication and a fast start. So how do you do that? Because that's important. You just can't take what you learn and hide behind your computer. I'm going to teach you all of that in my new book. So I'm so excited, you guys. This is the very first group of people that I'm announcing this to live. Um, This was a passion project for me. I literally took everything that I have learned from my mentors and how I've mentored others, not just in my company, but in other companies to achieve six and seven figure success. I took my entire training system, absolutely everything in my brain is poured out on these pages from my heart and from my mind, real success strategies that work to help you to rock your network marketing business. That's what it's called, Rock Your Network Marketing Business. It's a simple book. It is a simple read. It's just about 100 pages. And I want you to know it's completely generic. So you are totally cool in ordering this for all of your team members. And in fact, you should gift a copy to your leaders and to all of the new people that join your team because these are timeless principles. And this goes past social media. Again, it's all of my top tips for prospecting. It's how to, you know, take that past prospect to a recruit, how to effectively enroll them, how to power start them, how to teach dynamic duplication that that can lead to incredible success in your business and for your team. It's all here on these pages. And the reviews are already rocking. We are actually climbing up the ranks on Amazon bestseller. And I just posted a few things on Facebook, but here's how you get it. And if you get it, you get social media part two. And I'll talk to you about that in a moment. You're going to go to my website. You're going to go to sarahrobbins.com. When you go to sarahrobbins.com, there is a tab called store and click on it. You're going to have a choice between clicking on the book or my CDs, which those are different, but they're a great complement to my book, by the way. But you're going to click on my book. And if you want a direct link, just go to sarahrobbins.com forward slash rock dash your dash business. But again, just go to sarahrobbins.com and go to store and you can find the link to purchase a book. 
or you can go to amazon.com and just type in rock your network marketing business. But if you purchase it through my site, this is going to give you a link to get the free training. Okay. So I recommend you do it through my site, but you can always go back to my site to still get the free training. Now, quick thing, because of the popularity of the book already, it's going to show as temporarily sold out or temporarily unavailable. But you'll see next to it, it says, but you can still order. Order today anyways, and here's why. This is going to get you on the wait list to be the very first to get it when it's back in stock. And I have been told by Amazon and assured it will be in stock this week. You'll get your book this upcoming week, okay? So no worries. Even if it says sold out, keep ordering and order as many copies as you want. You absolutely will get the book. And if you purchase the book today, has to be done today, here's what's going to happen. You will not only get the book at the lowest price it's ever going to be offered. They've given you a discount for pre-ordering today. You will also get the recording of this training, Social Media Part 1, to pass on with your team. Why is that important? It's one thing if you're duplicating this is another thing to say to your newbies and to your current team and the people who join you, hey, do this too. And you don't have to put this together for them. You can be totally confident that you can pass this out to them. And just like Nikki, I mean, help their volume increase by tens of thousands of dollars in a short time using social media, you can do this too. It's $197 value. That's what I would charge for this training replay. You'll get it for free when you order the book, which is less than 12 bucks. Plus, I'm also going to give you an invitation, and this is going to be reserved only for people who bought the book, to our next Social Media Summit Part 2. This is going to be where you learn to rock your network marketing business via popular sites like LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, plus some of my favorite apps. That value is $197. You're going to get that for free as well when you buy the book. Now, I'm a kindergarten teacher, so I like simple math, but I think that's about $394 worth of training when you buy a book for less than 12 bucks, that in my opinion, this book is worth millions because this is what I've used to coach other people to achieve six and seven figure success in our company and in the network marketing profession. I promise you, you are going to love it. So how do you order and make sure that you get the free training? This is important. You have to follow two steps. Number one, you're going to go to sarahrobbins.com and click on store or sarahrobbins.com forward slash rock dash your dash business, whichever you want to do. But you'll go to my website. Follow the link to Amazon to buy the book. If it shows out of stock, you're going to order anyways because I promise you will get it. It even says it if you want the assurance. If you want a Kindle version instead because you just can't wait, get the Kindle version or get the book and the Kindle version. You know, if you're like me, I love to get the Kindle version so I can read it on the plane, but I always want that hard copy to put in my library or, you know, if you see me at an event, I'd be happy to sign it for you. Just bring it along. Um... But, you know, I always like to have the Kindle version and I like to have the hard copy as well. Or if you're, you know, anxious waiting for the out of stock, then get the Kindle version and read it while you wait for it to come and get the pretty copy in your hands. The point is, if it shows out of stock, order it anyways. And then step two is this. I actually, I'm going to go back. Step two is this. On that same sales page on sarahrobbins.com when you go to buy the book, you're going to see step one, how to order. Step two is you have to enter in proof of purchase. You have to enter in your name. You have to enter in your email. You have to enter in how you bought the book because we're going to cross-reference that. And if it's true that you purchased the book and our records align, then you're going to get an invitation next week to the training, part two, as well as the replay of this that you can pass on to your team. Okay? So you've got to make sure that you fill out that form on sarahrobbins.com. It's the only way that you're going to get the invitation to both. So make sure you tell your team that as well to go ahead and order. They will only be invited to that if they've purchased the book too. So make sure you show them how to order and tell them about the book and everything that's going on today. Now, if you decide to buy four or more, which I recommend you do, gift a copy to your leaders over the holidays or to newbies as they join your team. Don't you want them to be inspired and have the step-by-step? This makes your life so easy. I'm going to choose five people who do that, who order in quantity. We're going to just do a random drawing, and that will give them the opportunity to do some one-on-one coaching with me. Again, generic training, doesn't matter what business you're in. I coach leaders all the time. So again, you're going to enter your receipt purchase proof at sarahrobbins.com forward slash rock dash your dash business. Follow the steps one and two to get um, entered for those things. Again, if it sells, sell, says sold out, order anyways. Get your Kindle version, get your hard copy, and everything you need and the quantities you need so you're going to be the first to get it now. Now, 
here's what I want to do. I'm most excited about this part is our power hour. Now, I've never done anything like this before. I am going to take the next hour of my time and I am going to do some mentoring and you guys are going to do some mingling and meeting of one another over on my fan page. So when you go to Sarah Robbins, Rock and Robbins networking team in your search bar or type in facebook.com forward slash Sarah Robbins fan page, facebook.com forward slash Sarah with an H, Robbins with two B's fan page, you're going to see a picture of my new book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business. And when you see that picture and me say, shout out if you were on the training today, I want you to do me a favor. Can you give back for just a minute and tell me what you learned, your best practices, because this is going to help me to know what you liked best about this and how to prepare for the next one. The next thing I want you to do is post any questions you have for me for the next hour. And you're going to have to give me time because we're getting a lot of the momentum building there already. Give me some time to answer, but you can ask me any questions you have about social media, particularly what you learned today if you need some clarification or help, as well as just any tips on how to rock your network marketing business or questions about my new book. And if you bought it, post it there too, because I'd love to give you a little thank you as well. I will like and comment on every single post. I promise. Just give me some time. But head over to that page right now for our power hour. Let's mingle and meet. I'll give you some free mentoring as well over the next hour. Guys, I thank you so much for being on today's training. We hope to see you over at sarahrobbins.com. And again, over on the Sarah Robbins Rock and Robbins Networking Team fan page and on our social media summit part two. Have a great day and God bless. Goodbye, everyone. See ya on Facebook.